Welcome to Process to Profitability, a podcast all about the tools and strategies you need to serve your clients and grow your small business, hosted by me, Samantha Mabe of Lemon and the Sea. Join me as I chat with creative entrepreneurs and small business owners about how they built and grew their businesses and how you can do the same in a way that fits you. Let's get started. You're listening to episode 116 of Process to Profitability. Today, I'm talking about how to stay focused with Jody Graham. We dive into different ways that you can stay focused in your business to make sure that you're moving forward. We start by talking about why staying focused is so important and the different ways that we can make sure that we're doing that in our business. We talk about tracking our project, keeping our tasks specific, making sure everything we're doing is important to our business, and then we talk about brain dumping. Jody walks through what a brain dump is and how it can help us and how we can do that in our business. She also gives us some recommendations for tools that we can try out to see if they will help us in this and talks about letting go of tasks that we find out aren't important in our business. Jody is a health food obsessed, woo-woo loving bookworm productivity coach who's hooked on getting things done. She works with online side hustlers who feel like they're missing out on business income and growth because of shiny object syndrome, getting them focused on growing their biz quicker. Jodi includes her daily planner download in this episode, and you can find that at jodygraham.com slash daily planner freebie. I will also link to that in the show notes. I think it's a really great way to help us implement the things that we're talking about today and make sure that we are staying focused in our business so that we can really move the needle forward and get done the things that are most important to us. If you enjoyed this episode, I would love it if you would share it with a friend or leave a rating and review on iTunes. It helps other people to find the show and it helps me to bring on more guests to talk about topics that are important to you and your business. Hi, Jody. Thanks for joining me. Hey, Samantha. Thanks so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to talk about this. I read your bio at the beginning of the show, but I'd love if you could go into a little bit more detail about who you are and where you're from and what it is that you do. For sure. So I'm in Toronto, Canada, and I'm a productivity coach working with online business owners and entrepreneurs who are constantly distracted to get them focused on growth and progress in their business. So we work together to clarify their priorities and what they should be focused on and create a plan that allows them to stay focused so they can finally you know, see that progress and growth and the results they've been wanting in their business. So how did you end up doing this in your business? Was this what you started with or did you start somewhere else and kind of pivot along the way? I did pivot and it was a pretty big pivot. I used to be a holistic nutritionist actually. And uh, I really got into the online business part of it and started meeting all these online entrepreneurs and just absolutely loved it. But figured out that the nutrition uh, coaching was not for me. It just wasn't resonating. So that's when I took a lot of time to, you know, turn inward, see what, how I could best serve people and what I would have the most fun doing. And that's when productivity coaching came up because I just love making the most of my time. I really value, you know, life balance and experiencing lots of different things and making the most of my time. I want to be doing what's most important and meaningful to me because that's, what makes me feel like I'm living life to the fullest. And I hate watching others struggle to achieve that and trying to get themselves on track and being consistent and following through on what they most want to do and create in their lives. So I want to help others feel and experience life in a meaningful and fulfilling way as well. And I believe in order to achieve that, you've got to be focused and intentional and smart about how you spend your time. Awesome. So today we are talking about staying focused and really being intentional with that time. So I want to talk first about why that's so important for entrepreneurs. For sure. So 
chasing after all these shiny objects is not going to allow you to create the business you want. It's not going to serve your audience and it's definitely not going to get you the results you want. Results like seeing forward movement and progress in your business, growth in your business, you know, more and more income in your business. When you're working on a ton of different things and you're jumping around from one thing to the next, you end up not really doing anything at all. It might feel like you're doing Doing things because you're really busy but what are you actually accomplishing right there's probably a bunch of half-finished projects sitting on a shelf somewhere and you feel really overwhelmed and you're just spinning your wheels again not really making any progress in your business but when you're focused that's when you can really create results you can give projects and ideas the time and energy they need to be launched and to be successful you can put everything you've got into them and then you can monitor you know some solid results that you've created learn from them tweak things where necessary and make it even better and really create an impact for your clients and your business before moving on to the next thing it's about cultivating a balance between allowing yourself to be inspired by things rather than distracted and being focused enough to see your current projects through to completion. Yeah. I love that. And I think we all kind of know that, you know, we need to be focused. We need to actually sit down and do those things that we've, you know, made goals or do the client work that has to get done but we're still so tempted to get distracted by other ideas that pop up or cool things we see other people doing or even get distracted by just, you know, things on the internet that just seem more appealing and less like having to use your brain on hard things. So I'd love if you could give us some tips on staying focused that are just really the best way to do this so that we can move our business forward. For sure. So I have, I do have four of my main tips to share today um, about how to stay focused and avoid those distractions. The first one is to track the progress you're making. So consistently seeing that progress you're doing on a smaller scale. Uh, The second one is make the things you're doing and on your to-do list very specific. So there's no guesswork involved. And then the third one is ensure that the things you're doing are really important and meaningful to you. And the fourth one is to always be brain dumping. All right. So let's start with uh, tracking our progress. How do we do that? And why is it helpful when we're trying to stay focused? Right. So when we don't see obvious signs of our progress and we don't see it consistently, it can feel really discouraging and frustrating. And when we feel that way, it's so easy and tempting to move on to something else and get ourselves distracted with something new and shiny that we think will progress faster and will get us seeing results faster. Um, We lose focus when we feel that frustration and when we feel discouraged, when it seems like nothing's coming out of all our hard work. So being able to see that progress and make it tangible is really motivating. It motivates you to stay on track, to stay focused, to be more consistent and see that project or goal or idea you're working on through to the end. It's important to uh, see it consistently. It's like little rewards for you along the way. It's validation, it's confirmation that what you're doing is going somewhere and that you are working towards achieving your goals. And the reality is it's really easy to ignore that progress that you're making every day. We sort of dismiss it or we forget it or we don't even think about it in the first place. We don't stop to acknowledge it, at least not on a regular basis. And instead just keep our head down and constantly move on to the next thing on our to-do list because there's just so much to do and it never ends. (laughs) So we just keep going, going, going. So how to see that progress? How do we bring it into our conscious awareness? There's three ways you can do that. Uh, You can keep an already done list, what I call an already done list. Don't just delete things off off your to-do list once they're done or finished and move on to the next. Keep them top of mind with an already done list. So as you finish even the smallest task and the bigger projects, add them to this list. I do mine every Friday at the end of the week for the past week in a Google sheet. So it just keeps accumulating and it feels really great to go in there each week and have a visual and see the, you know, just the accumulated list of all the stuff I've done. 
and achieve so far this year. So it's kind of like a to-do list, but it's already done. And just for your reference, so you can see that progress and all the awesome stuff you're doing. The next thing you can do is clearly define what success looks like. So knowing the outcome or result you're aiming for will help you see your progress as you make it step by step. So you can do this again for the smallest tasks. Uh, so you can see how far you've come consistently. So for example, on a day to day basis, like what are your goals for the day? What are you planning to achieve that day? And you can also do it for the bigger picture projects. So you know when you've achieved the overall goal and it's done. And then the third way to see your progress is get an accountability partner or like a biz bestie or join a mastermind. Talk, so you can talk with someone on a regular basis about what you're doing. They'll give you some outside perspective, right? And get you out of your own head and acknowledgement and kudos for how much you're really doing. They'll be able to see it easier than you can uh, from the outside and they'll likely be very impressed with everything you're accomplishing. And then you can return the favor because you'll, you'll be able to see their accomplishments and make sure each of you has that perspective of how much you're actually doing. Yeah. And what I like a lot about tracking your progress is, you know, we talk sometimes about breaking down those bigger projects into smaller steps. And this kind of goes along with that is you're looking at those smaller steps and saying, okay, yeah, I actually, I did this. I checked something off. If we're just looking at like a big project, like launch a course, it's not going to feel like we're moving forward. If that's the goal that we have for the day or the week or the month, we need the steps in between to actually get us there. Yes, exactly. When you have it so big picture, like launch a course, it's really hard to take action on and, uh, and therefore make that progress. You're so right. All right. So the second thing you had mentioned was keeping things specific. So what does that mean? And why is it important to be specific as we are trying to stay focused in our business? Yes. So specificity is so important. I talk about this a lot. Uh, so maybe you've heard the saying, a confused mind always says no. So that's what your brain is often saying when it ditches one idea or project to move on to something else. It's saying no to something that's maybe confusing or overwhelming. And it's saying yes to something easier or at least something that seems easier. Um, so that was a great segue. We were just saying working on vague projects and goals and to-do list items is just way too confusing and not conducive to staying focused. You're going to have a lot of trouble following through on and finishing things that include words like plan or implement, develop, grow, you know, improve. For example, these are great words for larger long-term projects like launch a e-course, um, like we were just saying, for long-term overarching big picture stuff. But they're way too vague for what you're working on day to day or on a smaller scale. So, you know, again, examples are like grow your email list or develop a website or increase your followings. You might get started on stuff like that. You'll probably know a couple of actionable steps you can take right away, but you won't follow through. You'll soon get confused and not know what your next step is or what you have to do, and you'll give up on them or you'll end up skipping over them or not doing them at all when you start to feel that confusion about your next step. So when you look at each item on your to-do list, you want to know exactly what you need to do, what you need to do now, and then each step after that. So there's no wondering or guessing that just takes way too much time. And again, if your brain has to struggle at all to try and figure out what you need to do, it's most likely just going to distract itself with something else. So on your, you know, smaller scale daily to-do list, keep your to-dos really specific. You should know exactly what to do when you look at them. And each one should take you, each to-do should take you, you know, five to 30 minutes to do. Like it should be that broken down. Okay. So you mentioned kind of the language thing. And I feel like when we see ads or we read blog posts, like it's, it's using that language. It's grow your email list or launch a course or implement this strategy. So how can we kind of shift our mindset on that and maybe use language to help us break down those things and be really specific about what our steps are? Yeah, that's a good point because these things like grow email list and launch course, they're used in ads because that's what 
we all ultimately want, right? Those are our big goals and dreams and they sound great. It's like, yes, I want to launch that thing. I want to grow that thing. But using language, yeah, to break it down into more realistic, actionable items is a matter of, you know, asking yourself, what is the first thing I can do? And that, you know, in terms of launching an e-course, you know, there's things like you'll want to do research, you want to do market research, you want to create an outline of modules, you know, um, there's a ton of different uh, words you can use to plan those broken down steps. But as long as they are doable within a short period of time, then that's the right language to be using. Okay. I think that's really helpful. My husband was telling me that he is, he's a teacher and he does a lot with technology and he basically volunteered to teach this training where he's going to start at the very beginning of using a certain program. And so he said, usually what people do is they say, okay, I'm going to teach you how to use this whole program in an hour. And that's really overwhelming and nobody ever gets it, but he's going to, he said, I'm going to teach you how to set up the very beginning and like log in. And mm-hmm. I think <laughs> it sounds like those are the steps we need. Like if yes. you want to grow your email list, start with pick an email provider. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's right. So yeah, that's so true. It has to be broken down so Specifically, it might seem too specific, but it can't be too specific. (laughs) That's not possible. It can't be too broken down. So yeah, doing like your husband did, just create login. Yeah, like that's a step. That's a broken down doable step. That doesn't take any uh, guesswork in your brain, right? Your brain's going to be like, yeah, I know exactly what to do. Do it now. It's not going to get distracted from that. Yeah. And I think that helps all of us out there who like to check things off of our to-do list. You know, that's mm-hmm. kind of what we're working towards. If it's a five minute task and I can check it off, then I feel really good about, you know, I've done something for the day. Yes, exactly. And then you can add it to your already done list and see all the progress you've made. <laughs> awesome. So the third uh, kind of step or tip you had was to make things important. So what exactly does that mean? And how can we do that? when we're working on something in our business. Right. So unless something is important and meaningful to you, why on earth would you focus your energy on it? You might start out strong on something if it's not that meaningful or important to you, right? But if you don't feel motivated by it or excited about it and you can't relate it to a positive or beneficial future outcome that you want and desire, you're just going to end up putting it off, most likely by getting yourself distracted again. So rather than work on autopilot and just on random stuff that you know you think you maybe should be working on, take a step back and look at your big picture. For each of your tasks and goals, projects, ask yourself, a few questions, right? Turn inwards and just sort of reflect. See if you're working on the right stuff and moving in the right direction, the direction you want to move in. Your answers, you know, to the questions, I have some sample questions here. Your answers may allow you to let go of what's not important and that will free up time for what is. And again, you'll be able to stay focused more likely you'll stay focused on it because it's meaningful to you and you're seeing how it is aligned and linked to a future outcome you were trying to create. So some questions you can ask yourself just to, for each item you're working on or project, you know, to see if it's really worthy of your time. Uh, One question is, you know, why is it important to me? Straight up, just ask yourself that. We often, a lot of us don't even think about that when we're working on stuff. Other questions are, you know, why did I set this goal or why did I start working on this project in the first place? What purpose is it serving? Uh, What do I most want to see come out of it? What is it going to help me accomplish? What will the outcome be? And how will I feel when it's done and when this goal is achieved? How does it align with my values? And most importantly, is it bringing me closer to my big picture desires and the vision I have for my business? And how specifically is that happening? Awesome. I love those examples because I feel like a lot of times we read what other people are doing or 
that you'll see, okay, you should do this or you should do that. And this is a really good way to test whether or not that should be something you actually implement in your own business. And that very last question about, you know, how is it moving me closer to my overall goal and where I want to be in my business? I think that helps when you've got those mundane tasks that you know you have to do, like your bookkeeping. Nobody loves to do it unless you're a bookkeeper, but it <laughs> does have to get done. It's, you know, it's one of those things that moves your business forward, even though it's not the fun task you might want to be working on. Exactly. Yeah. There's a lot of shoulds out there and that some of them are people's opinions and some of them are things like the bookkeeping um, and having, yeah, that big picture, like having your big picture vision and goals that you want to achieve. Ultimately, having that clear and defined will help you make those decisions on a day to day basis. Part of what it takes to run a successful online business is having the right tools for the job. I'm sharing a list of all of the tools I use in my business in my toolbox. And you can find that at lemonandthesea.com slash my dash toolbox to download it now. These include tools that I use for podcasting, designing, running my business, and other things. So you can get a real inside look at everything that I use every day in order to serve my clients well and grow my business. Again, you can find that at lemonandthesea.com slash my dash toolbox. All right. So... The last thing you mentioned was brain dumping. So I want to talk about what that means. Um, some people might have heard this term before, but kind of what it means for you and how we can use it in our business. And then how do we actually do this? Right. So I love brain dumping. I talk about it all the time because it's so helpful and effective in keeping us productive and focused and on track. So a brain dump is one single place where you write and store every single one of your thoughts, your ideas, projects, goals, to-dos, tasks, just all the things. You just get it out of your head and write it down in one place. And having a brain dump will help you stay focused if you keep it handy and accessible to you at all times. I keep mine in Google and a Google sheet so I can just access it literally anywhere I go because as we all know, ideas and inspiration can strike at the most inconvenient and random times. So it's nice to have wherever you're brain dumping just handy to you anywhere you are. So as those amazing thoughts and ideas come up to you throughout the day, just add them to the brain dump. This way, you're not constantly trying to remember them all in your head because um, that's super distracting. So it's like you're constantly thinking about your new, this new idea or whatever you have to do while you're trying to do the thing you're working on in the moment. So, and you're not, this way you're not trying to get them started or working on them right away, right? Taking you away from what you're already focused on. So once you've written them down, it'll be easier to just let them go for the time being. Your mind can just not think about it because it's already written down. You know you can come back to it later. And again, stay focused on the task at hand. And I just want to reiterate one place. If you want your brain dump in one place, because um, I talk about or talk to a lot of clients who are like, yeah, I write everything down and they're on post-it notes around the house and in my journal and in my phone. And so you want it all in one place because I mean if you start writing it in multiple places, again, your brain is gonna have to start thinking really hard to try and remember where everything's written down and oh, where did I write this thing? So one place is super important. Yeah, it's not about brain dumping. All over the place. <laughs> you want to keep it simple and straightforward. All right. So I'd love to know when you, since you have your brain dump in one place, how often do you go back to that and kind of look back over it and kind of see what it was that you had thought of? That's a good question. I go back, um, I do a monthly, I have a monthly routine where I go in and track my numbers and I check that brain dump and sort of refresh it because um, I may have completed stuff already on it and just not deleted it yet or um, may have forgotten you know to put ideas so I do that once a month and then I also go in anytime I'm feeling overwhelmed so if my to-do list is just getting too long and I'm like okay whoa I have I feel like stretched too thin and just starting to get a little stressed or overwhelmed I go into it and I just think about any anything that's in my head I write it I add it to the rain dump 
And then that way I can pull out my priorities for repull, you know, reprioritize for my to-do list. And that's the only times I go in. It's so handy. Anytime you feel overwhelmed or stressed, or even when you're, you know, doing really good and you're like crushing all your to do's and you need the next project. So if you've finished a couple of things and you're like, what's next, you can go to your brain dump and pull out the next priority from there. So I know you mentioned that you use Google Sheets for your brain dump, but I'd love if you have other tools that you use or that you found that are really effective for your clients that we might be able to use to help us stay focused, whether it's places to write a brain dump or other things that might be useful in this pursuit. Yeah, for brain dumping. So there's lots of options. You can do it with a pen and paper. So just use a journal, old fashioned journal. You can also use Evernote because that's similar to Google Drive. It syncs with your phone and your desktop, so it's really handy on the go. Also, things like Asana or Trello, you know, you can incorporate brain dumps within those uh, project management tools. And there's also online whiteboards, um, a few, you know, whiteboards being just brain dump, blank brain dump areas available to you. So a few examples are Scribbler, uh, which is spelled S-C-R-I-B-B-L-A-R. So that's just scribbler.com. There's whiteboardfox.com. That's another one. And another great one that I've heard good things about is calmlywriter.com. So lots of good online options. Or, you know, again, the old-fashioned journal, pen and paper. All right. I think that's really helpful. We all like to have different tools and check them out and just see what's going to work best for us. Are there any other things that you found when you're trying to help your clients stay focused as far as, you know, tracking their progress or writing out why things are important that, you know, there are other tools you could recommend or other ways that they might do that that have seemed to work well? Other tools. Yeah, I go through, it's, you know, really personalized. So I go through quite a few different things with my clients, um, depending on what works for them. I have found doing the uh, goal breakdown, so like getting things really specific, like we touched on, is a really good exercise. Um, A lot of people I talk to, I'll ask them, you know, okay, well, do you break down your goals? And they'll say, yeah. And then we'll look at what they've written and it's still really big and vague. Um, So working through that process and getting, you know, into the habit of truly breaking stuff down is super, super effective. So again, a lot of people, you know, they feel like they're breaking stuff down, but they're really not because it still feels vague in their mind and it's still pretty big picture. And then also going through uh, the why questions, right? I gave you some samples of finding, like discovering if what you're working on is truly important to you. Um, But there are so many other questions, like deep questions to ask um, that we work through as well. Those are the two tools I'd say I use the most with my clients. um, And they're the most effective and the most eye-opening as well. Yeah. And I agree that, you know, I know you found this a lot that, you know, we break things or we think we break things down really, and we're not going far enough. And it sounds like it should be broken down to the point where none of those steps feel like they're overwhelming or like you don't know exactly what you want to do. Like they should be specific enough that you can look at it and say, okay, I know exactly what that means and how to do it. Or if I don't know how to do it, then it's a step to figure out how to do that to just really not feel overwhelmed when you look at the list. Because to me, at least, if I'm looking at something and it's really big, you know, I think what you've been saying is then you're going to lose focus because you don't, your brain doesn't want to concentrate on something that that is that big and that requires that much effort. Yes, exactly. And of course, we're not going to know how to do everything we're doing as entrepreneurs and, you know, online business owners, we're always learning new things and trying new things, but that can still be written down and broken down to the point where you know what you have to do, right? Like if you have to research online course platforms, for example, for an online course launch, then that's 
uh, that can be broken down specifically enough that you know what to do, like research Kajabi, research Podia, you know? Um, so it's not, yeah, you're totally right in what you say. And just want to point out, like, even if you don't know how to do something exactly and you're still learning, it can still be broken down in a way that you know what to do. All right. I did have one other question. And sometimes I think this happens to us that we have been working on something. We think it's important. We ask ourselves those questions, maybe, and we realize that it's really not. So do you have any suggestions on kind of letting something go that isn't important, even if we put that time and effort into it already? Mm, Yeah, that's a good question. So it's hard for a lot of us to let something go once we have invested that time because we feel like it's therefore wasted time. We wasted so much time, you know, and it was just, it feels, it can feel awful. You feel guilty. And I think that's just a perspective shift. You know, if you were guided to do the thing in the first place. Um, If you did it when you answered, if you answered all these why questions, right? And you dug deep and were like, yes, this is important to me. And you did it, then you can feel especially guilty for then letting it go. But there's a reason you were guided to do it in the first place. And we always learn something from what we do. And we always take something away. So it's never really wasted time. You know, in hindsight, in whatever, three, six months, a year, you're going to see, you'll be able to see why uh, you did that thing. You know, what good came out of it, what you learned from it, what it got you, what you, the benefit for you. And if you haven't yet done those why questions and dug deep and you sort of just started something randomly and now you're realizing I have to let it go and oh my gosh, maybe you feel bad again about wasting time. Again, just a perspective shift, right? Now, you know how to analyze and consider things that you're going to be doing and spending your time on. So you're going to be saving yourself so much time in the future. So it's okay that that's your starting point now. And maybe you have to let some stuff go that you didn't realize you didn't have this tool right in the past to consider these projects. So it's just about a perspective shift. All right. I love that advice. I definitely agree. And um, I think it's really helpful to hear that you know, when we're thinking about things that we might have to no longer put on our to-do list. So as we wrap up talking about staying focused, I know you gave us some like good examples, some questions to try out, but can you give um, just three action steps that somebody could take today that are those really specific things um, if they want to work on this in their business? For sure. So I'd say the first thing is just setting aside 15 minutes to do a brain dump today. So pick one place. You just want to do it for now uh, online or in a journal. Just get it all out of your head. Again, this can only, this only has to take about 15 minutes maximum. Um, Cause once you start writing stuff down, more will flow out. It'll just flow easier and easier as you go and you write stuff down. So just get that done today. 15 minutes max. The second thing I'd say is review everything on your to-do list right now, as it is right now, and ask yourself, you know, why are you working on it? What outcome are you hoping for? Is that outcome important to you? And is it bringing you closer to reaching your ultimate goals? So just start with a few of those questions, right, to analyze what's on your to-do list today. Again, that only has to take you like 15, 10, 15 minutes. And then the third thing, I'd say create a space to track your progress. So just like with the brain dump, choose somewhere to do this on a weekly basis. Today, just start with what you did last week. It's uh, a Monday today, but whenever you're listening to this, just think about your previous week, write down everything you did um, while it's still in your memory, and then make it a habit from now on every week. So that only needs to take you about, again, five minutes to do today. And then it'll be a nice habit and feel really good to look at every week. Awesome. So we always wrap up with some questions that I love to ask. Uh, And a big thing that we focus on here is serving our clients well. So I would love it if you could give us an example of how serving your clients well has benefited your business. 
For sure. Uh, so serving my clients well has created amazing momentum that's allowed my business to grow uh, and grow in a way that's easy and organic, which I love. Um, <laughs> easy and organic, you know, effortless in my own business. That means like I'm getting great testimonials, word of mouth, referrals, those kinds of things that build my audience and bring in more clients, get more engagement. It's just really great momentum that uh, feels, you know, easy and again, easy and effortless. All right. So, um, can you tell me two things that you're loving right now that can be business or life? Sure. Right now I'm actually in love with new moon and full moon rituals. Uh, so new moon rituals are for meant for intention setting and full moon rituals are meant for, you know, letting things go and releasing what's no longer needed. So they're a great way to make a habit of thinking about and considering, you know, what to manifest, create and goals, new moons that I'm working towards and then being thought to what's no longer serving me and needs to be released during the full moon. I just think they're so cool. Um, that's just the energy of each moon, the new moons for intentions, full moon for letting go and starting over. Um, both are important for productivity and focus. I recommend them to uh, some of my clients who are open to it. And uh, yeah, because the intention setting keeps you focused and letting things go helps just free up your energy and time, right, for what's most important. Um, so they're really cool habits. And the other thing I'm loving is lavender coffee, I'd say. Um, I started finding it at little independent cafes here and there, and it's just becoming more and more popular. Even Starbucks has it now. So anytime I can find a lavender coffee, I am all over it. Awesome. I have heard lavender is really good. I have not tried it yet, but it's definitely <laughs> on my list of things. I've had a lot of people recommend it. Oh, really? It's amazing. I love it. Awesome. So this episode is scheduled to come out in November. Um, so what are you excited for that's coming up in the future? Um, I'm excited to actually book more retreats, uh, business retreats. I'm going to one um, next October, um, or sorry, this past October, I went to one called the Imperfect Boss Retreat. It was, it's so amazing. I went the previous year as well. So it's just amazing to be around the energy and vibe of like other women entrepreneurs and online business owners and sharing ideas and all that stuff. Um, so I am planning to book more business retreats like that. I have to do my research um, for 2020 though. <laughs> Awesome. All right. So for people who want to connect after listening to this episode, where can they find you online? Where is the best place um, to get in touch with you? The best place to get in touch with me is at jodygram.com and Jody is spelled J-O-D-I and then Graham is G-R-A-H-A-M, one word. Or you can find me on on Instagram or Facebook. My handle is Jody Graham coach, one word. And I'm much more active on Facebook right now. I'm doing weekly lives Wednesday mornings uh, about getting focused and dealing with distractions. Awesome. I will link to all of that in the show notes. And I'm sure that people who want to learn more um, would benefit a lot from those lives, especially since, you know, they're consistent, they're weekly, um, and they can tune in to learn more about those topics. Perfect. All right. So thank you so much for coming on the show. I really enjoyed it. And I'm excited for people to take these steps and make um, some changes in their business to really stay more focused and see how that moves things forward for them. Yes. Thank you so much for having me, Samantha. I'm excited to hear and see about what your audience changes in their business too. Thanks for listening to Process to Profitability. Please take a minute to leave an honest review in iTunes so that I can help more small business owners and creative entrepreneurs find the show.